The Lives of the Saints by Father Alban Butler, November 17th, Jesuit Martyrs of Paraguay. The first martyrs of America who reached the honor of the altars died for Christ in 1628. This does not mean that they were the first martyrs of America since three Franciscans had perished at the hands of the Caribs in the Antilles in 1516. This was followed by the massacres in South America, and even before that, Friar Juan de Padilla, the first martyr of North America, had died in 1544. We do not know exactly where this martyrdom took place. In this regard, there has been talk of eastern Colorado, eastern Kansas, and Texas, but neither Fray Juan nor any of the mentioned martyrs has reached the honor of the altars for lack of sufficient documents on their martyrdom. It is not impossible that such documents will appear some day, but so far the oldest of the martyrs who have been beatified were three Jesuit missionaries in Paraguay. One of them was born in America. Roque Gonzalez de Santa Cruz was the son of Spanish nobles. He was born in Asuncion, capital of Paraguay, in 1576. He was so good and devout that everyone was convinced that one day he would become a priest. In fact, he was ordained at the age of 23, even though he considered himself unworthy of the priesthood. At that point, he began to concern himself with the Indians, whom he went to preach and instruct in the most remote villages. Ten years later, he entered the Society of Jesus in order to avoid ecclesiastical dignities and to be able to work more effectively as a missionary. At that time, the Jesuits instituted the famous Reducciones of Paraguay, and Father Roque Gonzalez played a very important role in this. These reductions were colonies of Indians governed by the Jesuits, who, unlike so many Spaniards who had Indians in encomienda, did not consider themselves as conquerors and masters of the Indians, but as guardians and administrators of their goods. The Jesuits did not see the Indians as a caste of slaves, but regarded them as children of God and respected their civilization and their way of life in everything that did not oppose the law of God. In a word, they wanted to make of them Christian Indians and not a bad copy of the Spaniards. The resistance offered by the Jesuits to Spanish imperialism, to slavery, and to the methods of the Inquisition ended up bringing them ruin in Spanish America, as well as the disappearance of the reductions. This took place a century after the death of Blessed Roque Gonzalez. Even the ironic Voltaire admired the work of the Jesuits and wrote, When the missions of Paraguay were taken from the Jesuits in 1768, the Indians had reached the highest degree of civilization that a young people can attain. In the missions the law was respected, a clean life was led, men considered each other as brothers, useful sciences and even some of the most beautiful arts flourished, and in everything abundance reigned. To achieve this, Father Roque worked for almost 20 years, patiently and confidently facing all kinds of difficulties, dangers and setbacks, with savage and aggressive tribes, and with the opposition of the European settlers. The Blessed devoted himself body and soul to the task. For three years he directed the reduction of San Ignacio, which was one of the first, and spent the rest of his life establishing half a dozen other reductions east of the Parana and Uruguay rivers. He was the first known European to penetrate some of the virgin regions of South America. One of his contemporaries, the Spanish governor of the province of Corrientes, who knew what life was like in those regions, testified that he could guess what the life he led had cost Fatia Roque, hunger, cold, fatigue, rivers swum across, not to mention the annoyance of insects and other discomforts, which only an apostle, a holy priest like him, could have endured with such fortitude. Roque came to have an enormous influence over the Indians, but the civil authorities hindered his work in later years, trying to use his influence for their own ends. In fact, the authorities insisted that in each reduction there should be representatives of the crown, and the brutality of these Europeans aroused among the Indians the hatred and distrust of Europeans in general. Unfortunately, this has been repeated in one form or another in the history of missions all over the world. How often the conduct of unworthy Christians has spoiled the work of the missionaries. In 1628, two young Spanish missionaries, Alonso Rodriguez and Juan de Castillo, went to join Father Roque. Between the three of them, they founded a new reduction near the Ijuhi River and consecrated it to the Assumption of Mary. Castillo was in charge of the direction, while the other two missionaries left for Caro, where they founded the reduction of Todos Santos. There, they had to face the hostility of a powerful curandero, 
who soon succeeded in getting the natives to attack the mission. At the moment the attackers arrived, Father Roque was hanging the church bell. A man slipped up behind him and killed him with a sledgehammer. Hearing the tumult, Father Rodriguez went out to the door of his hut, where he found the Indians with bloody hands. At once they knocked him down. Father Rodriguez exclaimed, What are you doing? That was all he could say, for the Indians beat him to death. Then they set fire to the chapel, which was made of wood, and threw the two corpses into the flames. It was November 15, 1628. Two days later, the Indians attacked the mission of Ijuhi, seized Father Castillo, tied him up, beat him savagely, and stoned the life out of him. Six months later, an account of all that happened was drawn up to introduce the cause of beatification. But the documents were lost on the trip to Rome. The cause was interrupted for two centuries and seemed destined to fail. Fortunately, a copy of the documents was discovered in Argentina, and Roque Gonzalez, Alonso Rodriguez, and Juan de Castillo were solemnly beatified in 1934. Among the documents was the following statement by an Indian chief called Guaracupi. All the Christian Indians loved the father, Roque, and felt his death. He was a father to us, and that is what the Indians of Piranha called him. 